Welcome to a Saturday morning edition of We Are the Church, a daily moment of encouragement brought to you by the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. And a good Saturday morning to you. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson. I serve the First Church in Orange, and it's good to be with you. Hope this finds you well wherever you are in the world. Today, some very familiar verses from chapter 3 of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a collection of wisdom sayings that have kind of just been all collected together, and somebody hit frappe and blended them all up. So sometimes they go in sequence, and sometimes they stand alone. This is chapter 3 of Proverbs, verses uh, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord, and God will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord, turn away from evil, and it will be healing for your flesh, and a refreshment for your body. How many times do we come to the end of a week, to the weekend, and we simply exhale, collapse on the couch? We have all these plans for things we need to get done around our home, and then we come to the end of a busy week and we just crash. We need to be resting. Part of the problem, I think, is that as we go through the week, we have divided up and compartmentalized our lives too much. The, the, the trick, I think, is to find a balance and to, and to find a rhythm, to walk with the Lord daily, to do no more on each day that the Lord requires of us, but to make sure that we do the things that the Lord requires of us. When we're trying to convince the world that we have all this productivity, and the reality is we could do about this much before we need to rest, the world wants to see us achieve more and achieve more and do more and do more. We need to be honest about what we can actually accomplish, and that's why I say, do no more than the Lord requires of you in a given day. Let tomorrow, as Jesus said, take care of itself. Let today's own troubles be enough for the day. This is hard to do when the world is pressing in on us. On the other hand, we can come to the weekend very spiritually restless because we didn't get some of the things done that we, that we really needed to get done, that the Lord wanted us to get done. When the Writer of Proverbs tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. What he's trying to say is, listen carefully for the word of God every single day. Those who know me as a pastor know that for the past three decades, I've been really trying and trying to see a revival of the class meetings by which the early Methodist people were known. Small weekly gatherings, not on Sunday morning, where people could watch over one another in love. Often the pastor, in fact, most often the pastor wasn't even there, but it was people working out the things that needed to be worked out. How in the world do I trust in the Lord with all my heart on a day-to-day -day basis? When the people began to help each other with the answers to these questions, genuine faith emerged, and it was a powerful experience for all of them. On Sunday morning, religion needs to be wearing glass slippers and silk robes because that's the time when we lift up the, the, the highest ideals for what we can be as human beings, for what creation can be according to God's purpose and design. We lift up the very idealistic forms of who and what we aspire to be with God's help and grace. It gives us something to shoot for. But between the Sundays, in the middle of the week, on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, we need to ask the pastor to sit to the one side, roll up our sleeves, get down in the mud and say, I know what the pastor and the others were talking about on Sunday, and, and I really aspire to that, but how does it work here in the real world? And for that, we need one another. I continue to pray that whatever revival or renewal will come to our church will include this time of mutual accountability, of people watching over one another in love, of people getting together not to sip coffee or have tea or to or to talk about the sports events, or to talk about the local gossip on the grapevine. People getting together to talk with one another about how are we really going to make it with God. 
when we watch over one another in love, from the youngest in our nurseries and preschools to the oldest in our senior adult Sunday school class, when we are watching over one another in love, not the preacher, not the teacher, but me, O oh Lord, standing in the need. When we are doing that, we will see the Spirit of God move powerfully through our church and through our communities. Just some thoughts for today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths and it will be renewal for your body and, your, and health to your life. Let's pray. Loving God, we do ask you to be with us this day on this Saturday. And we ask, Lord, that the, the times of the weekends when we can connect with you might spill over into the week and we would intentionally begin to watch over one another in love, lest any of us come, become too tired or any of us neglect to do the work that you call us to do. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for being with me this morning. It's always a privilege to have these couple of minutes of your time to encourage one another in Christ. I want to remind you that you can find We Are The Church every Monday through Saturday right here on this YouTube channel. And if you don't have a place of worship planned for tomorrow, you can join uh, the First United Methodist Church of Orange at www.funco.org. Till the, the next time, I want to ask you to remember to do no harm do all the good you can, and to stay in love with God. And I'll see you soon.